Hi, my name is John Borshoff and I am uh, CEO and MD of uh, Deep Yellow, a, an Australian uh, listed uh, company and uh, it's been around since 2006 and I've been involved in, in the company since uh, early uh, November 2017, about four and a half years. We focus in Namibia, which is a company originated uh, its, its key assets and uh, we're on a a, a strategy that in, entails both organic growth and uh, inorganic growth, and and I think we're uh, we've been yeah, consistent in our in our sort of approach and beliefs, and I think that may uh, pay dividends, and we'll see how how that we can express that uh, today with, uh, with with you, Matt. John, lovely to have you back. We spoke actually earlier this week. We talked about the market as as a whole. That was a fascinating conversation. Some really quite uh, good feedback on that one. You've, you've made people think, so appreciate that. But today, we're going to focus on deep yellow, and we're going to get straight into it. So. All uranium tuners at the moment are benefiting from the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust activities. Equities are up. People are excited. New people looking in at the space again, as they were at the beginning of the year. Um, but when the rubber hits the road, companies have got to get into production. You're one of the very few companies, at, well, few guys when you're at Paladin as a junior to get into production. Just how hard is it? And that's a good question, actually, and uh, and I and I really want to uh, tell it from as unbiased a view as I can give, without uh, extolling our virtues. the The difficulty is, I think, uh, really exemplified by the fact that there have been so few juniors that have uh, achieved uh, the reality from the dream. And, uh, and in fact, on previous occasions, I've always said there's only been three companies, uh, small cap, that have actually got to that, uh, that category and rank. That in itself uh, tells you that there's, there is some, there's something different and that the, the uh, many more people that have gold uh, uh, deposits get into production. And, and, and I've often thought about why, why is that? And, and why it is, is that is that it's a it's complicated by not only the the, the geology which is as complicated as it is for a, a copper mine a copper deposit or a gold deposit that's not a not a big, big uh, issue it's complicated by the nature and and uh, and attributes that that uranium has it's complicated by the perceptions of a nuclear in the broad uh, stream and and really you can't just confine yourself to the uh, to the to the mechanics and issues of just mining it. You are called on to answer questions way beyond that, and it's always been with uh, with 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 mining, with uranium mining. The the marketing, the 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 really sort of uh, opaque nature of how that is and how that works, and understanding why the the history what was and why that's created this sort of secret squirrel type activity in there so and the and there are many people that have said and i think what you do need is that you you need a, an internal understanding of the commodity as i say from an a to z and yes you call in your consultant you call in your your your, your specialist but they've got to be hammered and panel beaded to fit into what's possible in a very particular and a peculiar industry um, that, that has, has uh, sort of voices in government, in stakeholders, uh, uh, outside of the, uh, uh, the norm. And that's why I think that, that it doesn't stand uh, fools or it doesn't stand uh, uh, groups that have, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, not spectral appreciation in the technical corporate area within your own company and and I, that's all I can answer and say you know this is this is why and uh, and when I say genuinely that the group that was the paladin sort of formation group when I say emphatically it's the only group in the non-major league that developed um, uh, two mines uh, in in uh, uh, in, in, in the world post, post the sort of Chernobyl period. And, and that's, that's really something. Um, so when I say, you know, unique experience, 
everybody in their company say, you know, we've got 500,000 years or not that many, 500 man years and all of this. But we are genuinely, we have, I think, something that I believe in, that, that when we sort of uh, propose a, a t- particular approach or particular process, it's done from knowing how it works, not the theory of how it should work. And on that basis, then we can enhance and uh, and, and optimise even further. That's, right. That's okay. So you, you, you've got most of the Paladin team, that you've got the band back together um, at Deep Yellow. You understand that. But you also, you also sound like you don't necessarily believe what some of the companies, the junior uranium companies, are saying in terms of their ability to get into production. And I... And I, and I, and I, and I yeah, I'll let you answer that question in a second because I was looking at a chart which had been produced by the WNA in terms of what they believe the new production figures are going to look like over the next 10 years. It's a fraction and a very small fraction of the number which we've looked at when looking at the Uranium Junior companies' proje- projections of what they're going to be able to contribute in terms of production numbers going out the next 10 years. So what does what do the um, WNA, what do the trade companies, what do you know that us investors don't know? Well, the, the investors, let's say the investors are there listening and trying to sort of fathom it out from various uh, views given by uh, industry commentators, analysts uh, in particular, and what the companies state. So on that, you, you, you know, you try and formulate a, uh, 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 an opinion. But I think that um, analysts and, and, and some people that are predicting and projecting supply uh, think that a, a uranium pounds in the ground translate as easily to pounds in the drum as they do ounces of gold in the ground to it on, on in the uh, uh, in the mint or wherever it might be that is emphatically a big big difference so when people say oh look we've got all these deposits we've got all of this and uh, and using the yardstick of generality it means oh there's plenty of uranium out there in actual fact there's not the, uh, they, that doesn't, it doesn't uh, uh, diminish or deride the value of their deposit and uh, it might have some difficulties or for whatever in whatever the category you might think, but it doesn't, it's not being uh, sort of um, critical of the deposit. What has been critical, if you say anything, it's been critical of the damage done by Chernobyl and Fukushima. And there's no real sort of, People and nobody wants to admit any limitation. So they, how could they? They say, oh, yeah, you know, it's not important and we've got some people and we can do things. So I, I think that uh, generally speaking, uh, what, what, the, uh, what the industry needs, the consumer, is believability that once the, this group starts mining that there's going to be chance of a product coming out on a 95% uh, uh, chance. And, uh, and, and I think that... In, in that way, uh, and I've said often, you, you, you've just got to look at, you know, in a, in a company in survival, that it's surviving on, on uh, you know, it has elements of showmanship, elements of promotion, elements of, you know, dogged sort of, uh, uh, sort of uh, clear vision and just arriving at, 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 at something that is uh, stated. And, and in amongst that, people themselves can see, Oh look, yeah, this is this is that they'll all they'll all rise. By the way, there's no question about that. But it's it's it'll be that the uh, and I don't want to give a number on this, but um, the the constraint in supply by by not as many that will come into um, uh, production, and then even those that will, the percentage of project failure that happens, which historically can be statistically uh, sort of uh, uh, surmised, is that in a way they'll benefit from that because price will go up because of shortages and exacerbation of that shortage. But that's why I want to focus, so the- John, that's why I want to focus on, on product, a production discussion today because yeah. companies with, with strong fundamentals can come in many shapes and forms. There could be management team and experience like you, you were telling me you've got because you're Say one of the you know well only junior teams to actually get into production last time around or since since 
since Chernobyl. Um, you, they can have a good asset, as you're saying, but you know, pounds on the ground don't equate to necessarily pounds in the drum. Got it. Um, technically, competent people with the right amount of cash, which you, you need to you need to have to actually move this thing forward. So there's lots of ways you can you can look at this. I'm I'm just focused on, and I want to focus on. I, I know our viewers want to focus on companies that will get into production because, as you say, they will be the ones that benefit because if the supply doesn't manifest in the way that some of the companies are, are saying, there's a shortage and that in itself should drive price up scarcity, basic economics, right? So you, you talk about a two pillar strategy in your PowerPoint, okay? One is organic, which I want, I want to come to, but I want to get something out of the way. You've been long talking about M&A. You haven't managed to do any. Do you think the way that the market's going is going to be easier or harder for you to actually do an acquisition or some kind of M&A activity? Whatever shape or form that takes, it's it's a little bit uh, paradoxical actually, and uh, and the um, as as I think it's all to do with sort of uh, exchange ratios, and you know if you all go up, it's still the sort of uh, if it's a if it's a script deal um, that, that that can be nullified a bit, but the, the there are issues that as prices go up, it the show becomes different in the sense that those companies that have been sort of promising production, uh, you know, to produce, now, now the numbers are coming up where they have to show cause why they don't do it and, and the pressure then to, to be sensible and to try and amalgamate and to try and you know uh, use the benefits of the 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 not just the say in a case of deep yellow but what what good people are uh, in that group is something that 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 forces an issue and um so you know if you get if you get uh, to let's say at the moment i'll talk about a, a, a what apparently will look like a ridiculous number to people but let's say we talk 80 dollars and so let's say all these the most of the deposits fall into the viable range that means that everybody is going to, uh, under this uh, hypothetical scenario, everybody, all those teams, all those groups are going to produce and develop a mine. No, because but what what does happen is there's there's a real need then to say, look, how do we justify where we're at? Uh, we have got something. We, we we're missing expertise. You rely on uh, engineering firms. But all the engineering firms, they provide you with, with, a, with a solution, but you've got to actually, you know, put your thing on the block and, and take a risk. And, and those aspects and the, uh, what, uh, what uh, will force M&A, as I say, paradoxically, to actually even probably happening in sooner, and especially when there's not many other major groups that have expertise that will play in that game. Anymore after what happened in the in the sort of uh, pre Fukushima area where there was majors buying assets and, and building up their pipelines, so it's a it's not just a price issue, but what each can do. When it's out of range, you can say anything just about and say this is my DPS, this is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna gonna gonna. When it's in the price range, and then, well what to do. Well, that, that's interesting. Finance. That's an interesting point, John, because you, you're saying that price discovery in itself is not going to be enough for a lot of these guys. You know, when the tide, when the tide goes out, you know, you, you're going to see what, who, who, who's wearing shorts or not, or, you know, there, there's no hiding room is what you're saying, because you've got to technically be able to deliver on that. Okay. So my question to you is, what, what, what's wrong with just using theory? What's wrong with just using a recipe uh, t for this sort of technical production? Why, why are you so sure that these guys are not going to be able to kind of work it out? Well, some of them, let's say some of them uh, won't. Some of them acknowledge because they they approach and say, look, I think that uh, uh, with Deep Yellow we make a good fit and we, we acknowledge the expertise and ah, da, da, da. And um, so um, the... There is, you know, there's a whole lot of uh, uh, issues to assemble before the decision of a board is to say yes, uh, we're gonna we're going to proceed. A lot of these projects are quite expensive, and um, and they require a, a huge amount of uh, uh, sort of uh, under under the radar uh, sort of uh, assembly and 
and and they it's very difficult you know to see some of the organizations and why not it's not being negative it's just being that the that the some of these groups have been a result of a tragedy the the end keepers of companies that were you know sort of working and then gradually people eroded from it and it's left with certain people it, it, almost some of them in caretaker roles but yes doing a good job but in a specific area so the consequence of a damaging downturn and 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 people exiting from it probably not to be encouraged to come back why would a uranium guy uh, that had some experience now is making huge uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, money on a, on lithium on a lithium play that is already developing into something. So you know, losing people is hard to get them back, especially with that experience. There is definitely an element there, and um, so that's where uh, the, the 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 sector is a little bit broken. And it hasn't been tested. It hasn't been uh, uh, sort of uh, shown an opportunity that says, "Oh, look, we've we've developed four or five mines, or three or four in the last, uh, 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 you know, sort of five ten years." This has got no history in a decade. But are there conversations oh. going on, John? I, I'm sorry, I want to kind of keep, keep, keep the pace up here a bit because I know that you're in a rush and I want to, I've got so many things to ask you. Is do, you. do you think then, given what we're seeing in the market at the moment with, with uh, Spurt having an effect on, on driving spot price and you mentioned 80 bucks there, if the, if the spot price does um, carry on, um, you know, companies are going to start wanting to have conversations about contracts with utilities um, at, at some point. But do you think with the spot price moving like it is, they're going to be able to raise money? They're going to be able to raise money for defense purposes. I said there isn't a uh, hostile takeover. Um, and then they can manage the timing of that, that they can play the market just that little bit longer. And that means for people like you, talking the language of MA, you've got longer to wait before you can sort of come in. Because as you say, you've got to you've got to wait till the moment where they're putting their hands up and going, do you know what? Technically, we have no idea what we're doing. But that's already sort of happening, uh, one would surmise. Uh, that it's not, you know, uh, what what is happening uh on the surface, and, and and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, people are saying we, we really need to move on. We we've got to scale up, or whatever the whatever the language one uses. So this is not waiting for. Uh, and I use that eighty as a, as an example to uh, um, sort of exaggerate and just sort of put more light onto the onto the situations as it could be. But uh, this is a sort of. Uh, slow cooking, uh, you know, uh, you're in the tub and it's getting hotter and all of a sudden it's too hot to get out of and uh, you could have done something before, you know, uh, when, when, when you're more capable and able. So um, it is a, a, almost a, an axiom that uh, the, the consolidation has to happen after a period that a commodity has undergone for such a long time. And, uh, and, and that's not me sort of, uh, you know, pushing my barrow. It's such, a, it's such an obvious uh, sort of uh, uh, outcome and, and out my strategy is built that, you know, that the industry needs something more than just uh, single, single mine operations. And, um, and some of them will service the industry by single operations. And some of them will serve it with pipeline optionality, diversity of, of supply, which makes you a stronger uh, contender for you know to provide material to a customer in the long term. So all of those combine up why people would want to join together to make a uh, a platform that is really suited to the time. So are you saying are you saying that, or would it be fair to say that you think there are good assets out there, not necessarily as many good companies out there. So M&A is inevitable. Well, they're not, they're not companies that are enabled to, uh, to, uh, to go to that next step, let's say, as much as one uh, would think. Some have a, almost a wait and see custodian uh, aspect to them, you know, developing, nurturing, doing that. 
and then saying, okay, uh, at the right time, and there's no disgrace in it, joining up and getting it into a pipeline and uh, it becomes part of the future. So that's that's where I'm where I'm saying it, that it's not, uh, you, you know, um, I can see more sort of smaller companies in the ISR in the US uh, developing, um, you know, smaller operations. But even there, we're starting to see uh, consolidation and amalgamation to absolutely get into that sort of two to three million pound on the cumulative of where they want to go. Because why are they doing that? Because they need uh, recognition to the customer of what they are and how they are able to do things. And, and there, I think, um, and the preparation for that is that you know, you, you've really got to put into your teams people that have been with you for six months before you need them. And uh, to really sort of get into the into the groove, uh, hopefully they're multi-skilled a bit, they can provide service in other parts of your company, but you just, just don't get a pool of, uh, you know, uh, uh, specialists and and, uh, and beyond the specialist side managers just together in in sort of a, a three uh, a three month HR program uh, where they, you know, they're just sort of judged on paper and a bit of a bit of feedback and referees you don't get a team like that particularly in a in a in a in a business that doesn't suffer fools as much. Uh, in in that that what is no news on a gold mine is bloody high news on a on a uranium mine, and all of those things uh, and they cross feed into the industry so they affect other uranium operations in terms of, you know something that happens in one part of the globe uh, has implication on you know the integrity of the supply industry uh, everywhere so it's it's beholden that the whole industry works well everybody is professional they're delivering and uh, and and for a critical uh, element that has no uh, sort of substitute apart from a bit of inventories or that you could borrow uh, off until you sort your own production problems out. So as an, M &A, sorry, as an M a strategy, it sounds like you're dismissing going around and picking up, I know you reference ISR projects, but it could well be other things. Going and rolling up small projects here, there and everywhere. So you've got 20 projects which give you collectively three million pounds. That doesn't sound like it's something that excites you. So if you are going to go after bigger projects, so you've got fewer moving parts, larger assets, there's fewer of them out there and they probably know their value. So how are you ever going to be able to close an M&A play in this space? Unless someone, well, is it because someone shots up to you and says, do you know what, you've got the technical expertise, we've got quite a nice asset, let's work together? Is, is that, so that's not really M&A. No, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a possibility. It's a okay. whole range but, of, you know, joint venture, a farm in, a, right. a, a merger, a, a takeover, and, and, and it's a sort of a horses for courses. The, uh, the, the whole thing is that none of these deposits are optimised to the extent that one thinks, uh, both in terms of their resource. Some have got resource potential. Some of the old ones that have been sort of worked at hard uh, back in the halcyon days have been fairly well drilled out. But the expiration is a very, very big part of, uh, uh, you know, a pipeline that there's upside there that you can have still through the drill bit. There's, other, there's another expiration that you need where you're going out a little bit into the green fields and you're really trying to discover something. And on that side, I put next gen and vision. I put, uh, uh, you know, the HUSAB where basically they came and explored on neurology, looking next to where we were at Paladin and, and all of that and, and out came something. But they are they are discoveries. I believe what we've done in, uh, in tumors is actually nearly a blank sheet of paper and we've created well that wasn't there in the four years to what what we we got in the tumors project okay so should we should we move on to tumors and and, and talk organic growth so in terms of m a yeah. uh watching brief we'll see what you come up yeah. with but all of all of the above is is being considered okay um but but no well let me ask one more last question are there any meaningful conversations are you is an are you going to tell me we're constantly looking at stuff? But are, are you really? Is there anything that you said? You know, we've got a chance here. Well, we're we're, we're I've got uh, you know people deployed to do that. Uh, 
I'm, you know, I'm, I'm involved. We, we, we have, uh, we're having discussions, analysis, due diligence, all of those and above uh, in, in terms of that. So it's not as if um, uh, we're looking, you know, with a, with a blank piece of paper and saying who are we going to approach or what are we going to do. And uh, so that, that's more in a sequencing sense. And, yes, we're, we're active. You're active. Okay. Well, let's leave it there. Come back. We'll come back to that, John. We will. Let's talk tumors because that's the organic bit um, here. What, again, you're, you're, you've done the PFS, running up to DFS. Um, you know, I think in the presentation you're talking about, you know, you've got 12 year and 20 year uh, numbers. Can you just remind people the top line numbers there? Because I want to want to talk to you about how you go about building this. Because we've established at the beginning, it's important to get into production, and you feel that you can. So just just the headline numbers first, and we'll hear what you've been up to. So, uh just to give you an idea, and I'll just explain, uh, we've got two types of targets when I joined. One was the paleo-channel, paleo-channel uh, Langer-Heinrich-style in an old uh, ancient uh, river system and, and easy to get to near surface, less than 40 metres uh, uh, below so in soft rock. So that, that target we identified early on that in actual fact it wasn't these sporadic discoveries, but they were, they were, they were knitted together and uh, uh, within a 120 kilometre paleo channel system, which was high, highly fertile uh, in, in, in uranium. And we started that off with about 25, 20 million pounds that was in the uh, resource base. The other one was uh, about 45 million pounds at very high grade of about 0.4, uh, about 420 ppm in hard rock, which is on the same uh, uh, trend as what Husab is and, uh, and Rossing. And, and there was a lot of work done there, which we haven't done any work up to date on. We've left it. We concentrated on, uh, on the tumours and, uh, and it really we analysed and uh, the, uh, the, type of, the type of hunting methodology, if you like, in terms of in an exploration sense that they applied and that really it looked like they were missing the forest for the trees. And it's proven to be correct. We, 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 we drilled, uh, we've been consistent in that, in that approach, uh, and, and that is one thing that Deep Yellow has been consistent in its strategies on both sides of the, 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 uh, uh, the, uh, the growth strategy. And we've now increased it by a factor of uh, nearly four, from you know twenty odd, twenty five million to hundred million pounds, and uh, and that's only testing sixty percent of the hundred and twenty five kilometres, and we've we've established the uh, the base that we reckon will give us an ore reserve, uh, which will have uh, qualified in the next sort of three weeks, uh, that will give us that twenty uh, year mine life, and we're not saying that's all it is. It's going to be probably thirty as we as we uh, uh, spend more on that. On on the back of that, uh, we're we're developing. Uh, you know, we're moving our DFS, which is an in an interim stage of just optimizing, getting things read together, and then the real sort of uh, uh, economic part of that will be started to be uh, written down in the first quarter of next year uh, for completion in the in the sort of latter part of, of, of next year. Um, the, so this is a really exciting thing that we, we, we've got, uh, both for the country in which we work what, and for what we are identifying, and not only that, on a type of deposit we're very comfortable in, in, in mining and, and exploiting and, and uh, being sure, much more sure, that we can deliver product from. Uh, on 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 numbers that we're predicting. Okay, so, so that's so. So let me just again, just one for, for expediency sake. So, okay, Namibia been producing millions of pounds of uranium for for years. If you look at who's sub rossing, um, is that the thing that gives you comfort, or is it the fact? Oh, we've done this before elsewhere. We know what we're doing. We'll be fine. I mean, how do I know? What gives me a, a better degree of certainty that you're actually going to be one of the ones getting into production with this asset. Forget what's gone before. Why, why is this going to happen? Well, our PFS is showing that we can, we can, we, we're in the sort of numbers range that we can uh, sort of start applying a real measuring stick for. That the process 
of uh, of extracting that uranium. We are comfortable with we innovated uh, certain processes that can really give us uh, uh, advantage, and we've now innovated even further of things we can apply on the tumours, which go by way beyond what we applied in the Langer Heinrich. And, 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 and honestly, that, that part, and when we evaluate things like that, it's not from a theoretical, but from a real applied, you know, what, why didn't we do that there? Well, this is what now would happen on this base, et cetera. And all these things are being tested uh, in the optimization and the, uh, and the trade-off studies. So that's why uh, uh, we, we uh, are uh, in the, the services, uh, the power and the and the water, we're we're, we're comfortable with uh, the uh, the country is building another desal plant, and uh, and we believe that will be uh, in time for when uh, when it's needed, and and I think that if you ask me the question that, uh, and and having sort of uh, produced over sort of uh, 40, 50 million pounds, and delivered on that. Uh, what question would you ask to the to the guy that's never even delivered anything, and uh, that says to you, well, well you know, you, you ask him, well, how do you trust? How do I trust you that you're going to deliver? And uh, so I think we we've got credibility and proven credential, and uh, and and uh, and on that basis, that from that proven credential, we'll even be more efficient learning from what we did before in a real sense. And not just relying on on engineers who haven't had any practical experience on the uranium mining. They might have built a lot of gold mines, but and and all of that. And and what we do is by by blending the engineers of, of contract with our IP, we make a much more forceful and believable uh, sort of uh, DFS and uh, and the sort of whole design of where we're going and how we're going to do it. Okay. The, the, Yes. I was going to say, so the, I mean, the, 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 real, the real test point, look, I could ask you, you know, well, you know, can you accelerate your DFS? Have you got enough money? You've got money, um, et cetera, et cetera. But the real telling point here for your company and other companies is when a utility signs a contract with you because their diligence process, it, they need to ensure that one, you're going to produce and two, that you're going to produce consistently and at the volume you say you're going to, right? That That's the moment here. So. When do you think your company is going to be in a position to have those sorts of conversations again? Uh, and what, what would that agreement look like? So uh, we, we, we estimate that even while we're developing and getting to the sort of uh, pointy end of the DFS, which could be toward the middle of next year, we will be there confident that based on a, a price that we believe We'll get out of bed for and make money for our shareholders at that we can we can proceed. So so on that basis, then we already would have started having, as I say, conversations built on previous conversations where we're just having a cup of tea and a coffee and a, and a whiskey if that's your sort of want, uh, and building those relationships and re-establishing them with the utilities that we're we're competent. They know that the, the utility knows that on the, you know their their left side vulnerability is covered, and 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 there's a sort of a competent group involved not only in the supply but in the enrichment and, and the whole play, whole thing. That's a different sort of uh, 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 when I front up with a with a uh, um, a team with a utility, I'm in a completely different league uh, than than a, a group that's just sort of in the theoretical, I'm, I'm matching what a major would be and how they would uh, be, even though I've done it with different companies. And it's not just me; it's just it's the it's the group and the and the whole thing. And those people are what give confidence uh, to the um, to the uh, consumer. Uh, the financier gets uh, uh, confidence from from that, you know competent group and uh, it's just professionalism and uh, an achievement, I guess, uh, that that we can deliver with. So, so coming back to the second part of the question, so it was, was, you know, what would an agreement like that look like? I mean, you've done it before. So, time, oh, so basically, yeah. yes. 
So, so basically, and this is, uh, you know, that little trade secret maybe, um, uh, I'm not interested in, uh, in doing contracts uh, at, at startup that, um, that uh, are, are market related at the time. And with a floor price that's sort of ridiculously low, you know, even when prices were eighty dollars, uh, floor prices were sitting at thirty, and uh, with ceilings. Because if you do those sort of contracts, when you're looking at financing, they rate your revenue on not what the price is, but they rate it on the floor price. So you have to allocate an inordinate amount of uh, of, of, uh, of of product against that, which then mucks up your, your, your program and, and could leave you in a legacy situation that you've overcommitted on prices that aren't maximising your shareholder value. So the, the fixed price contract becomes very important at the financing stage. And, uh, and, and because then the pounds are measured on what, what, is, de what is delivered. And there's all, mad, all kinds of contracts you can fit into the whole, the whole system and, and, uh, and, and, and design them, which I won't go into here. But the, it's, it's really important, you know, uh, at that time that you really need, need, need contracts uh, to service, to service uh, um, the amount of financing that you need and whether it's 40, 60, uh, you know, 40 debt or 50 debt, whatever the project is, however it looks, uh, these, these are the, the primary driver uh, contracts and you hope you don't have to uh, sell all your availability just to get that debt sorted if you're going for project debt through bank financing or whatever it might be. But how, how, and, and, then, how and then the other type, yeah. I was going to say. Then that, the other that, contract. I say you go, John. You go, John. Cool. So the other one is that the utility says to you, I'll fund you for, you know, 100 million, but I want my product to be uh, for X dollars. So you're paying the ferryman and, uh, and, and probably you're paying at a rate that, you know, maybe with interest rates, uh, it's a cheaper deal with that way than with um, uh, uh, paying off what looks like a... Uh, a short-term gain and a longer-term pain. So all of those are, need to be considered in, in how you formulate your, your, your financing and startup. But the, 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 the whole essence is, is that, um, look, it takes you 18 months to, to, to build and, and get an operation going. So that's not going to kill your, your sort of opportunity base because you're really putting out forward contracts uh, beyond that period. And... Um, so that that you um, and there's no rush within the six months if we believe that price is going up. It's not going to be the top of the price, but it's got to be a price at least where that project is given a fair chance, and you've got sixty percent of your product left for optimizing good contracts that you can do above that once you know you can produce it. And the uh, so you're limited because you say, okay, I'm going to produce uh, five million pounds or three million pounds. But I know in my first 18 months that I'm only going to produce one million pounds as I'm ramping up. So you're not, you can't commit the, uh, you know, into that area where you haven't uh, yet sort of commissioned and ramped up to, and you don't know what problems you'll meet in that ramp up. And uh, so the, these are these, and when people look, oh yeah, I'm producing three million or four, and they think they can account for all of that in terms of uh, uh, obligating it against, against fine. It doesn't work like that. So, and I think they're the things we, we sort of, you know, I'm sure other companies think about. This yeah, well. but, but yeah. Let, let me ask you a question again, and, and I'm probably going to sound like a bit of a groupie here, and I just say to Joker64, don't. Um, is how much of a poker game is this? In the sense that if, if you truly believe what you've said about the number of people who n knew Companies are going to be able to not, you know, not not getting back into production, but new production. If there are going to be as few as you think in the short term, how much of a poker game can you play with utilities? And so it's like, you know, because if I if I look at some of the forecasts going forward, and perhaps I think you know some of the trade associations will reevaluate after the last four weeks with with the um, with the Sprott physical. 
uh, uranium trust, maybe they'll reevaluate. But as it stands today, they're forecasting 50 bucks middle of next year, right? If it is 50 bucks, using your hypothesis of you're one of the very few that's going to actually be able to get into production, do you, do you submit ludicrous responses to RFPs from utilities on the basis that, well, no. I'm sure we can get into production. No. You're, you should not be sure about those yeah, guys. But I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. You know, look, as you say, uh, there's the push, the push mentality for for pro or the pull. I will only start participating when there's the pull factor. The pull factor is the utilities want product. They've realised all of those issues that we're talking about. My shareholders are taking a risk on that. I hope they are. So until there's the pull for, for product, I'm not going to convince, try and convince uh, them, and, uh, you know, how many ever times I say, and I say, oh, that's, that's, the, that's, that's the, the, the bull uranium guy talking, or, and there's many others that in, in, the, in the business. So the only time you can fix something is when both parties agree what's wrong. If I'm sitting there and the tire is flat and I'm saying to the other guy, it's flat, and he says, no, it's not, it's okay. Well, until we agree there, we don't get the bloody uh, spare out and change the bloody tire. And, and in a way, I want to have adult conversations with the, uh, the utilities. We both realise that supply is scarce and that's no, that's no bloody thing I've created. It's there. We're not talking shortage now, we're talking scarcity. And the utility realises that they've got to uh, jump in and somehow secure under sort of whatever way they can uh, on a problem that they also genuinely believe is now here. Be it a problem that is going to last 10 years to recover on or whatever. And, and that's what it is. Uh, and as I say, it's almost demeaning at the moment to go to... Uh, 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 utilities and try and convince them that you you're going to have product uh, they just don't they don't believe and they don't want it we believe our projections that they will want it we we know how difficult it is to get mining going um we know uh, you know major companies saying you know how can uh, uh, juniors promise with these uh, dfs's all these numbers i'm not saying that they are and uh, and and the uh, and we we know nobody's ever done it, and yet the industry is believing the the consumer is believing that these things will come into 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 fruition. So I'm just looking at it from I'm judging things from what I think the company uh, my company can do. I'm saying that these are the parameters that will eventuate and how uh, um, uh, the supply demand dynamic uh, will work. Uh, for those that don't believe me, they can then invest in somebody else that, that will do it another way. And, um, and, 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 and you know, the, the, the result will be judging in hindsight, say, well, you know, yeah, maybe these guys were right or maybe they're wrong. But I, I certainly believe that uh, getting ourselves out of a hole that we're in uh, as a collective in the supply sector is not just a matter of price. And, uh, and there's just a whole lot of uh, aspects that, that really need to be brought into play and realisations have to be uh, uh, brought to play so that some fundamental things can be fixed in our industry. And I think Pal uh, Deep Yellow has got those elements and, the, and that experience to at least to be a, a, a contender uh, of, uh, you know, ones that will go past the finishing line uh, uh, with, uh, you know, on a, on a prediction they made. 